Out of all the FNAF fan games that I've talked about on the channel, none of them have surprised me, and not in the way that you think. I'm not saying that any of these games haven't done something unexpected, or even something that hasn't made me jump, but none of them have ever replicated the FNAF formula to the original FNAF's degree. And yes, I know a fan game based off the original isn't going to 100% try to copy the game, but I feel like most FNAF fan games try to use the formula within their game to make the horror feel more real. Together Again, A Lake's Funland Story is a game that I thought wouldn't surprise me at all, but diverted my expectations completely. This game captures a unique experience that uses the FNAF formula perfectly while making it its own game. It has the similar FNAF game loop while having unique mechanics and characters that make the game fun. On top of this, it has its own lore that makes for a really interesting story. So let's dive into the fan game together again. The game begins with a cinematic cutscene in a cool animated style displaying some important scenes in the upcoming story. It also has some good background music to go along with it. We then load into a menu screen that looks extremely well made. This hinted to me that the game was going to be much better than I originally thought. After hitting night 1, we load into the first 8-bit style cutscene taking place in 1968, where Oscar, the owner of this company, seems to be being discharged for some reason. He goes on to say how he helps the company so much and he's being let go at the first sign of trouble. This then escalates to the room becoming dark and a dark entity speaking to him and tells him how he can feel Oscar's desperation and how he can help him out. The entity then goes on to tell him how he will provide him with fortune, power, influence, and stability, but in return he only needs one thing. Oscar reluctantly asks, what is it? The entity then tells him it's his son and how he won't harm his son in any way, but will take something from him in the future. Oscar disagrees with this, but the entity tells him that he won't have a job and this is the only way to leave with a bright future ahead. The cutscene then ends and we are introduced into Ashley Waters, the main character of the game, who explains how she's doing an investigation for her class on the mysterious disappearances of three children, Martin Calcott, Josh Felwick, and Wendy Gribble, who all went missing in the same way via leaving their house at night around the same time, then disappearing. We are then thrown into the office for the first time. All right, first night on the job. Oh, the office is a mess, but it feels like a nice place to work. After taking a look at the cameras, we then receive a phone call from Ashley's mother explaining the mechanics and how we have to use a flashlight in the vent cameras. Ashley's mother goes to say how the machines are acting aggressively at night. She believes that they search for intruders at nighttime as opposed to day, and that there were speakers installed in different rooms to lure them away. Before the phone call ends though, Ashley's mother reminds her that she had left three pills for our anxiety, and then she would pick us up at 7am before saying goodbye. Being that this is night one, nothing really happens. The only animatronic that we have to worry about is Hayden Bonanza. He roams around the location and we have to lure him away using the previously mentioned speakers when he gets close to our office. Outside this, there is nothing else we really have to worry about. This night allows you to really get a feel for the game and learn how to use the cameras and speakers. On top of this, the graphics look really nice and polished. The background has some really cool ambient noises that really make the game feel more tense overall. There are also some small items that you can interact with that will trigger a voice line from Ashley, which is a really cool touch. Once the night ends, Ashley gives her initial thoughts on her first night. Great. First night done. And that was surreal. Not positively surreal. <laughs> 
In my opinion, these voice lines that Ashley gives throughout these nights is a really clever idea that makes the game feel more real as if you actually went to the place yourself. On top of this, since Ashley's mom is the quote unquote phone guy, I think that is a cool touch that most FNAF fan games wouldn't do. After night one, we enter the first post night minigame where we play as Ashley, and we need to wander around asking people questions in order to aid in Ashley's investigation. The first two people mention how when the kids went missing at night, they were all spotted at Lake's Funland. Ashley then explains that she's doing an investigation on the missing children to a man named Darren. Darren then tells Ashley that he is an ex-detective who's conducting an investigation of his own and says that she should come over sometime, and then he and Ashley trade contact info. Outside the first two people and Darren, the rest of the NPCs don't really have any other valuable info, but you can still talk to them. We then head into night two, where we also receive a phone call from Ashley's mother who tells us of a routine check of the animatronics and how they have learned something that can help us. She tells us how Alex the Coyote and John the Rabbit on stage 2 both have a problem with their eyes, so when they enter the office, you need to hit the button in the middle of the room to turn off the light which makes them leave. Alex comes in from the hallway and he only comes in from the hallway and visits your office quite frequently during this night. Also on stage 2 is a tape player that needs to be constantly playing. If the tape messes up or stops, it needs to be rewound and played again. This mechanic is to prevent Alice, who is also on stage 2, from coming and killing you. In addition to the new animatronics added to this night, there is also the exposure and panic meter which become more important. I'm not saying that it wasn't in the first night, but it really doesn't like get used at all. The exposure meter goes up any time an animatronic enters the office, and if it fills up completely, well, you die. The panic meter goes up much slower. This meter causes your mouse to shake and hallucinations to appear the higher it is. You have to take one of the pills that you have been given in order to bring down the meter. To be honest, this mechanic adds for a really cool way to inconvenience the player if they forget about the meter or run out of pills. It adds a layer of tension that makes the game much scarier. After hitting 7am, we go into the next mini game following Ashley, where we are invited over to Darren's house and he tells us to make ourselves at home. We meet a woman named Elizabeth Hill and for some reason she looks like a certain animatronic that is in some of the night sections. After that we go meet Jane, Darren's daughter. While talking to each other, we see a flashback of Ashley's past where she's playing with a little boy named Harlan. Ashley goes on to tell Jane how he was like a brother to her. She then tells her how, he fe how she feels bad for him since his little sister was kidnapped and his mother was killed in a car accident. Ashley was extremely sad for what happened to him. After this, night 3 begins. Just like before, the night starts off with a phone call from Ashley's mom. She tells us that we have the place to ourselves and we can play on the arcade games if we want to. This is a hint that will be important for one of the endings in which you have to play on different arcade games. She then tells us how a guard named Michael has had a problem with Lake getting into his office. We learn that Lake doesn't like the light, so we need to flash our light when he's in the bright spot of the camera, the only catch being he is very fast. So he moves through different cameras. A cool touch is that they utilize the bad frame rate of the cameras which makes Lake's running animation very cool. Outside of Lake though, no new animatronics are added, but him being included does make the night more chaotic. Once we complete this night, we head back into the minigame section, where we are met with Darren and Ashley discussing the case. Darren brings up that there were much more kids that went missing, but turned up a few days later. He said that the kids were found alive, but their condition wasn't good. This was done by criminals who were caught around two years ago. Darren goes on to try to connect the two cases but there isn't really any solid evidence to link both together. Ashley reminds Darren that the three kids in her case were rumored to go missing in Lake's Funland. 
Then Darren recalls the owner, saying how he's not a fan of the guy and he is just a greedy man and doesn't think that he would have anything to do with it. Ashley, after hearing this, reminds him of Lorraine Wilson and how she was murdered in the back alley of Lake's Funland. After she says that, we see a cutscene of a little girl being chased by a shadowy figure in Lake's Funland, but when we follow them, we find the little girl dead. Then night four begins. We begin with another call from Ashley's mom. She tells us how she's heard complaints from both her and Michael, the other guard on the job. She also tells us how after looking through some recordings, Chick the bird on stage one has been seen crawling through the vents. So just like Hayden, we need to use the speakers to divert her away. She also tells us how Chick the bird can't see since she was left out in an alley and was found during a blizzard. Ashley's mom then goes on to give her opinion on the case that we are researching. You know, that investigation you're doing for school about the missing children and their possible connection to Lorraine's assassination, I, I, I mean, you're doing great. It's just, it's just that I don't think you'll get anywhere with it. Like, it's been about four years since that and there's barely any information on the case. Whoever you ask will probably lead you to simple rumors. There's a bunch of them out there. I don't know, I'd suggest you find another case. There's plenty of interesting cases you can work on. What about the robberies at the Red Path Museum? That sounds interesting enough. I'm sure you'll get a high grade. <sighs> Listen, I just, I, I just think it may not be safe to do an investigation on such a serious case. At least if you're not a professional certified detective, but you do what you think is best. Alright, that's all I had to say. Take care and good night. That was... Why would she be so nervous? I mean, I know I'm not working on the least serious case, but that was interesting. After the phone call, the night begins. In this night, two threats are added, being Chick the Bird and John the Rabbit on stage two. They both crawl through the vents, but they are a little different. Chick the Bird is a character that needs to be lured between rooms. If she gets into the left vent and enters your office, it is game over. John behaves similarly to Alex. He approaches from the right vent and pokes his head in. And all we need to do is like Alex is turn off the light and he will leave. Something to know is that every time the animatronic is in the room, it also makes our panic meter go up more and more. So being aware of where it is at is important. It's also good to mention that the speakers that we are using to lure certain animatronics deteriorate over time, so different speakers need to be used sparingly in order to prevent them from breaking. After the night is completed, we move into the next minigame section where we're talking to Jane, who is asking Ashley more about Harlan. Ashley tells Jane that she hasn't spoken to him in over four years and hopes he's doing well. But as we see, that's not the case. We see a perspective of Harlan talking about how nothing is working out before walking up to a noose. I'll let you put two and two together on that one. After this, we see Harlan being spoken to by a mysterious voice. This voice turns out to be the entity from the beginning. The entity goes on to tell Harlan about the deal with his grandfather and how he can give him a new family and make him feel loved. Harlan reluctantly agrees, and we see him become more and more debauched, and then after this, the night begins. Just like before, the night begins with a phone call from Ashley's mother, who apologizes for all the stress this job has caused us, and then hangs up. In this night, no new threats are added, but it serves as a final test to see if the player has mastered all the mechanics and behaviors of the animatronics. In my opinion, this is the most balanced night. Everything is coming at you at once and you have to manage everything while being aware of everyone. And not to mention the panic meter. You can either try to fight through the shaky mouse and the hallucinations, or you can save your pills for later whenever you think you would need them. Everything boils down to barely having enough resources to get by this night. Between the animatronics that come into your office and the ones you got to monitor on the cameras, everything seems super chaotic, but once the night is over, Ashley has this to say. Alright, I'm fucking out of here. Huh? Mom hasn't arrived yet? 
Returning to the minigame section, we follow Oscar again, who is trying to support his family and stay under the radar from the cops. He then reaches out to the entity asking for help. The entity tells him that he has been observing how he runs the company and has picked up a couple of things of its own. The entity makes a deal with him in order to help Oscar. He needs the blood, the souls, and the lives of five children. Confused by this request, Oscar is outraged. The entity doesn't seem to take no for an answer. Oscar, thinking about everything he has and everything he will lose, says, you can count on me before the night begins. We see another scene of a child being murdered outside the alley of Lake's Funland. Night 6 begins with a phone call but not from Ashley's mom, instead we hear a man on the phone who addresses himself as Mike Schmidt, the security guard that monitors the place during the daytime that we've heard about before. and I come back here, but um, I haven't seen her the entire day, and I, I'm assuming she didn't pick you up either. I'm, I'm really worried. I, I tried calling her and everything, but I got no answer. So, uh, please give me a call if you know anything about her, okay? I wrote down my phone number on a piece of paper. Should be in one of the desk drawers. Alright, that's all I wanted to tell you. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Good night, Ashley. What? Michael hasn't seen her either? She's never missed a day at work, and... Dad hasn't heard a single thing about her all day either. Christ. Who is calling to tell us that Ashley's mom has become unresponsive, which is not like her at all. This night, like night five, consists of us defending against all the animatronics, but they're all much more aggressive than before. You have to be absolutely perfect with everything that you do and not make one mistake. On top of this, since the animatronics will be entering your office much more than normal, this makes it to where you're going to run out of pills before the night is over. This makes you consider during certain points of the night if you should try fighting through the inconveniences to save a pill for later. Once the night ends, just like a classic FNAF 1 style ending, we receive our check and the game is over. When returning to the menu screen, we see we have earned one badge and there is a seventh night titled Finale. In order to unlock this night, you have to get the good ending which requires you to go to nights 3, 4, and 5 and play mini games in order to unlock the good ending. The first time we have to go back is night 3 and we have to hit the arcade machine on cam 7 and play its raining carrots. In this mini game we have to catch carrots and avoid the fruit. After playing the game for a while a child's face will fall down and once we catch it we get transported into a cutscene mini game that's very reminiscent of FNAF 3 where we have to go find a child and tell him to take our hand. We next go into the next minigame on night 4 where we have to click on a paper pal on camera 9 where it starts up Graham's West Rage. In this game we need to shoot the bad guys and avoid the good ones and after playing for a while just like before a crying child will appear and once we shoot it we get transferred into the minigame again and we have to go find the next child and like before tell the child to take our hand. The last mini game is in night 5, where we have to click on this Ashley plush on this table. This takes us to memorizing with Alice. In this game, we have to match all the pictures before the timer goes out. After playing this game two times, the last time we play it, the game will end. We will flip over a child's face and be transported back into the mini game like the previous ones, and we have to find the last child. And I also forgot to mention that in all three of these mini games, we are watched by a shadowy figure. But once we find the last child, we tell them the exact same thing we've told them before. After this mini game, we are required to beat night 6 again, and instead of seeing a night complete screen, once we beat it, we see Chick the Bird who appears in our office, and then the screen cuts to black. Then into another cutscene with Ashley. 
This time a woman appears wearing a Chick the Bird mask. The woman begins to tell Ashley that the children in the mystery of her case are here, before taking off her mask and revealing that she is Loran Wilson. She begins to tell Ashley that the reason they are all here is because of her mother who killed them. Ashley seems to be in denial of this, but Loran seems to understand that her mother did it under the corrupt control of her father. She tells Ashley that her mother was only protecting her and never wanted to hurt her, and she regrets what she did and then she tells her that she needs to come back one more time to set everybody free. And then she tells Ashley that her mother loves her before night 7 begins. In this night, it's somehow harder than nights 5 and 6. But once completed, we get to see the final cutscene after what we hear sounds like Ashley blowing up the place. We are then met with Luran, who tells us it's over, before all the other children appear, telling Ashley that they forgive her mother one by one. Then we see one more child, Harlan, who says that she didn't have to do that, and they could have been together peacefully. She then tells Harlan that it's not over, and that he still has a family on the other side, with his true family. And for some reason, this part hit me really hard. I've never heard, I have never ever heard of one of the children that have gone missing ever being satisfied with the animatronic life they've had. But after this, Ashley and Harlan say their final goodbyes and the game ends. It is Together Again a Lakes Funland Story, a super cool and good FNAF fan game and if you haven't checked it out you should totally do it. This game is amazing and it, you should definitely play it for yourself because it is really really good. And like I said before guys, if you have any ideas or comments on other FNAF fan games you want me to check out or any games in general, let me know in the comment section below. But yeah guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay awesome, God bless, and peace.